Say you're in Texas on a trip, or you live here and you have only one day to go to the parks. Or maybe you have infinite days to go to the parks and you're just watching this video for fun because you're bored AF. Well, if you're in any of these situations, then you probably want to know what major Texas theme park is the best. And if you only had one day to visit, which one should you go with? Well, in this video, I am going to be using a system to rank the parks to find out which park is the best for you. Plus, at the end, I'll say if this lines up with my personal opinions on which park is the best. The three parks that I'm going to be talking about today are Six Flags Fiesta Texas, Six Flags Over Texas, and SeaWorld San Antonio. All of these parks have different things to offer, and I am going to be ranking them using eight different categories. Roller coasters and thrill rides, which is worth 25 points. Atmosphere, or the mood that the park gives off, which will be worth 15 points. Theming and immersion, which will be worth 15 points. Family fun, 15 points. Shows, 10 points. Food, 10 points. And finally, bang for your buck. Basically, do you get enough for what you pay for? And that will also be worth 10 points. Please feel free to adjust this if you want. For example, if you're looking for a park with great shows, then maybe make the show category 20 points. And if you do that, half or double the numbers. For example, if I give shows a 5 out of 10, and you change it to out of 20, then it would be a 10 out of 20. At the end, I will add all of the categories together and make a final score which will be out of 100. The highest score is the best park. Alright, now let's get started. First, let's talk about the smallest out of the three parks, which is SeaWorld San Antonio. SeaWorld San Antonio is a 250 anchor park with plenty to offer. While this is on the smaller end of the SeaWorld parks, it does still put up a fair fight against the other major theme parks in Texas. Over the past couple years, the park has definitely upped their coaster collection by adding two major coasters, as well as a couple new thrilling flat rides. Plus, the park is home to many animal exhibits and shows, which very much add to the experience. So, getting into the categories. First up, with roller coasters and thrill rides. I would give this park a 16 out of 25, which is basically a 6 out of 10, if you are wondering. The reason that I am giving it this score is because while the major coasters that they have are awesome, for example, Steel Eel gives amazing floater. Wave Breaker is a super fun launch coaster. Great White is a very smooth Batman the Ride clone. And Journey to Atlantis is a nice ride for a hot summer day. I haven't been on Texas Stingray, but it looks amazing as well. There just aren't as many coasters as the other parks on this list have. That is why I am giving the park a slightly above average score in coasters, but not by that much. Now for atmosphere. The overall atmosphere of the park is great. I'd give it a 15 out of 15. The park is very pretty, especially on a nice bright day. And overall, it is very calming and chill. Not much chaos, which is very nice. I love how I can just walk around the park and listen to the wind, look at the beautiful scenery, and just chill out at the park in many areas without being in a big crowd or hearing the loud roar of coasters around me. And that's why it's getting, like I said, a 15 out of 15. Next is the theming category, where I am giving this park a 5 out of 15. The reason why is even though the park looks pretty in many places, there really isn't much actual theming in the park. Whether it's in queue lines or shops or anything like that, the park doesn't really make you feel immersed into any sort of theme in the park. And that is why it's getting such a low score. Now onto something that the park does do a lot better at, and that is family fun. There are so many things for families to do, including some family-oriented coasters like Wave Breaker or Journey to Atlantis, but there is even a super well put together kids area of the park that has Super Grover's Boxcar Derby, formerly known as Shamu Express, as well as a huge playset and more. 
To top it all off, the park usually has some characters from Sesame Street posted around, so your child, little sibling, or childlike brain can meet some characters like Elmo or Big Bird. Because of this, I am giving this park a 14 out of 15 when compared to other kids' areas in the other two parks. Now on to arguably the least important categories. First, with shows, I am going to give SeaWorld a 10 out of 10. SeaWorld has a lot of cool animal shows that give park goers a variety of experiences. If you want comedy, check out Sea Lion High or Sea Lions at Play. Both give a nice laugh. Or, if you want to see some cool tricks that sea animals can do, stop by the Ocean Discovery Show, which shows off some different types of dolphins and their various tricks and stunts. Now in terms of food, I give this park a 5 out of 10, meaning that it's pretty just average. The majority of the food that you can find is just simple chicken tenders and burgers, with the occasional pizza stand as well. If you want something healthy or just plain different, then good luck, because that's pretty much non-existent in this park. And finally, bang for your buck. A day ticket will cost you about $60 if you buy your ticket three days in advance. There are also multi-day tickets where you can take a visit to Aquatica, the park's water park if you want to, and those will cost you less per day. By the way, I might do a water park video just like this one at some point, but for now, I really haven't been to all of the major water parks in Texas, so I can't really comment on all of them. Anyways, there are also some different annual passes that you can get. Bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. These all give you entry to the park all year, although the bronze pass does have some blackout dates, as well as discounts on food and merchandise in the park. With the Platinum Pass, you can get admission to all SeaWorld parks, including SeaWorld Orlando, San Diego, as well as Busch Gardens Tampa and Williamsburg, plus all of the SeaWorld water parks as well. The passes will cost you as low as about $6 or $7 a month, all the way up to about $17 a month. With this, I would give it about a 9 out of 10, because the day tickets could maybe be like a couple dollars cheaper, but the season passes are definitely worth your money if you plan on coming back more than twice a year. Overall, if you do everything that this park has to offer, I would say it's pretty well worth the price. Overall, the park gets a 74 out of 100, or a 7.4 out of 10. The next park that I'm going to be talking about is only a 20 minute drive from SeaWorld, and that is Six Flags Fiesta Texas. This park, which sits in an old limestone quarry, was acquired by Time Warner in 1996, who changed its name from just Fiesta Texas to Six Flags Fiesta Texas. These owners have since transformed the park into a major park for thrill seekers around the country. In terms of thrill rides, I am giving this park a 22 out of 25, which translates to about a 9 out of 10. This park has an amazing and diverse coaster lineup with a great top three, Iron Rattler, Superman Krypton Coaster, and Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster, as well as super fun supporting rides like Goliath, Poltergeist, Batman the Ride, and Boomerang, I guess? The park also has some super fun thrilling flat rides, like Joker Carnival of Chaos, which opened for the 2019 season, or Daredevil Dive Flying Machines, which is scheduled to open this year. Overall, it has 10 coasters, which is a lot more than SeaWorld, but not quite as many as other major theme parks in the US. So that's why it gets a 22 out of 25, and not anything higher than that. The next category is atmosphere, and let me just say that this park is super nice. The scenery is beautiful, the park has a nice relaxing feel to it, and I just love standing around staring at the beautiful quarry walls. The overall mood just walking around the park is great, so for the atmosphere category, I am giving Six Flags Fiesta Texas a 10 out of 15. Yeah, so this category is based on how you feel at the park many days, and an unfortunate thing about Six Flags Fiesta Texas is that on many occasions I go to the park and find major rides closed, like Wonder Woman and Superman in early June 2019, or Iron Rattler later in that year. 
On top of that, the staff of the rides aren't so good at making sure trains are dispatched quickly, leading to bad ride capacity and longer lines. Overall, the park itself has a great feel to it, but the operations of the park make it go from a 15 out of 15 to a 10. Next is theming, and this is something that Six Flags Fiesta Texas does way better than most, if not all, parks in the Six Flags chain. The park is pretty great at immersing you into the experience of the different areas of the park, of which there are five, not including the water park and the park's scenery is pretty impressive overall. The coasters, on the other hand, don't have much theming in the queue lines or stations, with a few exceptions. Still though, I would say Fiesta Texas does theming pretty well overall, especially compared to SeaWorld, so it's getting a 13 out of 15. Now for the family fun category, which this park does a pretty alright job on. I'd give Fiesta Texas a 12 out of 15. If you have a super small child, then this park may not be the best for you, because most of their family style rides are more geared towards like elementary school aged kids. For example, you have Roadrunner Express, which is a super fun aero mine train, and Pandemonium, which is a super fun spinning coaster made by Gerslauer. These are both super fun family rides that can ease a child into riding bigger roller coasters. There is a pretty small kids area named Kidsopolis, which has a small kiddie coaster, now called Streamliner Coaster, as well as some other little small rides. Because of all of those factors, like I said, I am giving this category a 12 out of 15. Six Flags Fiesta Texas has a great selection of food, including some sit-in food restaurants like Old Blues Barbecue, which is in Crack Axle Canyon, and Johnny Rockets, which is near Wonder Woman. There are also a couple healthy options, like places where you can get gluten-free options, as well as some salads and things along those lines. I would give the food a 10 out of 10 because of variety and goodness. <laughs> the old Fiesta Texas before it was acquired by Time Warner was very entertainment based, meaning that there are still a variety of shows now, including Rockville High, which is a very fun high school themed musical show. There are also a couple of fun live music venues as well, where you can just sit down and take a break from the thrilling rides or family fun. In all, I'd give this a 9 out of 10. Not quite as good as SeaWorld, but pretty dang close. Finally, there is bang for your buck. Now, Six Flags parks are notoriously very cheap in terms of memberships. You can get a membership for as low as $6 a month and as much as $17 a month. There are four different tiers of memberships. You have Gold, Platinum, Diamond, and Diamond Elite. With each, you get unlimited visits to all Six Flags theme parks and water parks. You also get added bonuses like discounts on food and merchandise, and with select passes, you get upgrades on fast passes, or as the park calls them, flash passes, and also exclusive ride time. You can also get a season pass for unlimited visits to Six Flags Fiesta Texas for only about $80. A single day ticket costs $65, which means that if you are planning on going more than once, then I would recommend getting a membership or a season pass. Overall, I give Bang For Your Buck a 10 out of 10, mainly because for all you get with this huge park, a $65 price is not that bad. Also, the Six Flags membership program is an incredibly easy way to save money if you love going to amusement parks. Adding them all up, Six Flags Fiesta Texas gets a 86 out of 100, or an 8.6 out of 10. So, so far, Six Flags Fiesta Texas is better than SeaWorld based on this scale, and honestly, who's surprised? Now on to the last park out of these three, which is Six Flags Over Texas in Arlington, Texas, right between Dallas and Fort Worth. This is actually the original Six Flags Park, and its name, Six Flags Over Texas, is a tribute to the six countries that Texas has been, for lack of a better term, owned by. 
This is another Six Flags park, which means that the pricing is the exact same as Six Flags Fiesta Texas, so of course, starting with a 10 out of 10 for bang for your buck, let's get into the thrill category. Over Texas has a lot of roller coasters to offer with a lot of variety, but most people agree that the top coasters aren't quite as good as the ones at Fiesta Texas. Their top three are amazing though, New Texas Giant, Titan, and Shockwave. And they have some pretty okay supporting coasters like Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast, Batman the Ride, and Judge Roy Scream. Personally, I am going to give Over Texas a 20 out of 25, or about an 8 out of 10. Next is the atmosphere. Now this park has honestly a pretty crappy mood. The whole park just seems underwhelming with its overall aesthetic. There is a whole bunch of advertisements everywhere, the landscaping doesn't seem very well taken care of, and because of this, I am going to be giving Atmosphere only a 5 out of 15. It's honestly just not a great looking park, but something that is a little bit better is theming. Even though the park overall doesn't look the best, the theming is honestly pretty good. The park has a couple different themed areas, including a western style town and a Gotham City themed area. The western town is pretty well themed with some really nice western building facades. And even though the Gotham City area isn't quite as well themed, the individual rides do have some really nice theming in the queue lines like Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast and Batman the Ride. Overall, the theming is pretty good, especially for more of an amusement park versus a theme park, and for that reason, I am giving this park a 13 out of 15, just like Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Now for family fun, which this park actually does very well. Six Flags Over Texas has six main family attractions, Runaway Mountain, a fun indoor coaster, two mine trains, Runaway Mine Train and Mini Mine Train, a fun kitty coaster named Wildy e. Coyote's Grand Canyon Blaster, plus Pandemonium, a fun spinning coaster, and finally Judge Roy's Dream, which is a pretty mild wooden coaster. Plus, the park has Bugs Bunny Boomtown, which is a kid and family area of the park. All of this makes me give Six Flags Over Texas a 15 out of 15 in terms of family fun. Now for shows. Shows at the park are honestly better than you would think. I highly recommend the Texas Justice Show, which is a hilarious close-up gun show that is in the middle of the western area. It is a great comedy and action show, but really, other than that, there aren't any major shows in the park. So because of one great show, but a lack of variety, I'm going to give Six Flags Over Texas a 6 out of 10 when it comes to shows. Finally, we have food. Six Flags Over Texas has actually a lot of very great food. There are plenty of basic burger and chicken tender places that you can eat from, but there are also some good barbecue restaurants including JB's Smokehouse Barbecue, which is located in the western area of the park. Because of this variety, but not quite as much variety as Six Flags Fiesta Texas, I am going to give food a 9 out of 10. So now, with the 10 out of 10 for pricing that I mentioned earlier, the overall over Texas score is a 78 out of 100, or a 7.8 out of 10. So, in conclusion, I got a 74 for SeaWorld San Antonio, a 78 for Six Flags Over Texas, and an 86 for Six Flags Fiesta Texas, which means that by 8 points, Six Flags Fiesta Texas is, by my rating system, the best major park in Texas. Now, this actually does line up with my personal opinion. I absolutely love Six Flags Fiesta Texas, mainly because of their awesome coaster collection. Combined with the beautiful scenery and theming, it makes just an amazing park. As you can see from this ranking video, Six Flags Fiesta Texas is a super well-rounded park, and it does very well in almost every single category. 
Overall, I would suggest Six Flags Fiesta Texas if you're looking for thrills and scenery, SeaWorld for a fun atmosphere and shows, and Six Flags Over Texas for a great selection of family rides. And yeah, that's really it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the thumbs up button and comment below. Did you like this new style of video? I actually did write out a full script for this video, so I did a lot of extra work. Plus, of course, editing the audio files, finding all of the footage, and all of that kind of stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm hoping to do more of this style video in the future because this was super fun to make. And look out for a awesome video in the next couple of weeks coming out on my channel that is about Six Flags Fiesta Texas and that's all I'm going to say about that. Anyways, like I said, smash the thumbs up button, subscribe, and comment down below if you liked the video, and yeah, I'm gonna see you guys all next time. Peace out.